a local hip-hop artist makes an international name for himself. He is the first artist to power his concert with 100% renewable energy. It is a real honor to recognize Mr. A.Y. Young, the founder of Battery Tour. It's incredible. Can't wait for you to see this. The United Nations is now throwing its support behind him. Mr. Young? has made a big impact in his young life, born in 1991. He's a singer-songwriter, a dancer, producer, entrepreneur, and sustainability advocate. He's staged and performed more than 800 concerts. He was named by the United Nations recently as one of 17 youth world leaders of the world the only individual selected for that honor from the United States. I'm looking forward to stimulating this local economy further, bringing entrepreneurs together, bringing businesses together, bringing the world together. So we can make some change. I'm here to listen. Tell me what to do. Give me ideas. My mission is to kind of break down these silos and build bridges to power collective action by bringing everyone together. It's going to be incredible. My work plans in three different phases. I'm going to make an album powered 100% by renewable energy. Right now, A.Y. Young is working on an album based on the 17 United Nations goals. Major stars like Tech 9 and Billie Eilish will collaborate. There are 700 million people that are still living in poverty. The whole premise of your music is about collaboration 100%. and about getting excited. It's about going across the finish line. I don't think anyone can disagree with that. Not everyone needs to have access to energy, water, food. these outlets for change. Applaud it. We've been brought together by that guy. And it's interesting who's been brought together. I don't know what your backgrounds are, we might hear a little bit later. The different people who are gathering around the issue of storytelling narrative, culture, in affecting actual change, not just talk about change, which we've been doing for a long time. I have a big interest in this. But tonight we have uh, a head of a climate-leading bank. We have a head of a global NGO. We have a head of a global events and music brand. And we have some other surprise guests as well who are doing it on the ground and who are also at the highest levels trying to make sense of the global crises. We use the word climate, but it's shorthand for a gigantic global scale intersection of issues. It's all really one story with different outputs. The man who's brought us together is an inspiration. Uh, he is a climate advocate, and he's been doing it, living it, lit and led by a story he thinks he's in, trying it out on the ground and grafting as only a street performer and an artist knows how. And he's managed to gather around him this wide variety of people, which tonight includes you. Would you please give a huge welcome to Mr. A.Y. Young! <laughs> Bro, grab a microphone. We can change the world. Is that a lie they told? Some people know the lyrics. That's crazy. Now, <laughs> look, f first up, man, I'm sensing the throat tonight. Yeah. A little bit. I'm having a little bit of a throat issue, guys, so I'm going to try to just tough through it because I've been traveling and losing my voice. Tonight's show is brought to you by the word resilience, as you will see. <laughs> anyway, first of all, I should say full disclosure to everyone. 
We've done one or two things together before, haven't we? Yeah, we have. We kind of know each other. Timo and I used to do the Global Goals Music Roadshow, guys. Uh, yes, 45 episodes of this, some in glamorous locations, most of it 4,000 miles apart. Uh, and together we, as artists and communicators and storytellers, have a passion for this. And that's how we got on. Yeah. So tell me about you, first of all. Huh. You, about me. You're a music artist, you've been on the ground doing it. How did you get connected to sustainability as a music guy? Yeah, you know, people ask me that all the time, actually. It, you know, guys, to be super honest, it wasn't necessarily, like, just, like, I didn't set out to be, like, a young leader or a sustainable artist. I really set out to do what I love to do. You know what I mean? Because I think in life, we should all do what we love to do every day, right? Like, what we're passionate about. Right? Yes. <laughs> and so, I, you know, I got off a TV show called X Factor, and I just wanted to, I want everyone to hear my music, right? And I kept being told no, because the music industry is tough, you know what I'm saying? You got to have all this stuff. You feel me? So I, I was, like, obsessing over what I want to, you know, I want to do what I love to do every day, right? Like, I see Bruno Mars, Ed Sheeran, these guys doing what they like to do. So I was like, oh, my gosh, how can I power a concert anywhere? And so in 2012, I, I had this eureka moment. I was like, oh my gosh, like everyone needs energy, right? There's energy in your food and water, right? We all need energy. And I was like, wow, if you, if you store enough energy, you can power anything. I like that. And that's how the battery tour started. It did. But it's called the battery tour for a reason because you power it all through. And you were making the kit as well, weren't you? You weren't just kind of, oh, I got some stuff from the DIY store. <laughs> <laughs> you got, you know, you, you, you built the kit yourself a bit like an engineer. So you know what it takes to power change. Ooh, what oh. said team <laughs> to, to, to plug in the world. Yes. To use music to power action. But it's led to a project that's brought us all together. And tonight is a, a sort of coming out of a next level of it. What is that project called? Drum roll. Or knee roll. Nice, I don't nice. Know. <laughs> like, it's like a drama it class. Is... Project 17. Not that. Okay, that was it. <laughs> that was the Global Goals thing. We, we, talked we had about it on the, the screen the podcast. whole time. That was oh. a bit of a miscue. To be honest, as theatre goes, that wasn't great. Oh my but... gosh, Timo, what is Project 17? I have no idea. Well, that's, I'm coming to you as the expert. Drum <laughs> <laughs> rolls. Okay. okay, well, how long do we do each other through this? It might confuse people. I'm going to switch back to being me. <laughs> no. you, you do you, man. Don't, I've always it. said it. <clears throat> Project 17 yes, is sir. an, it's an out... Yeah, yes, sir. Oh, real we, serious. Should we, we perch now? Serious Let's here. perch either side of the totally. screen. Yeah. Like we're, yeah. Well, there I was we going to say Val Dunican, but most people won't know what yeah. that is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Project 17, Music for Impact, is what it's all about. Talk us through the basic structure of how you see Project 17 and what it is. Yeah, and, and I'll get a little bit deeper that I haven't really gotten with a lot of people. Is like on this journey uh, of doing the battery tour. Right? I, I didn't even call it the battery tour in the beginning. Like I was like performing, you know, and I was like, I'm AY, and I was like looking back and I saw batteries and I was like, this is the battery tour. <laughs> and then people would donate. They'd be like, oh man, I love when you do Garth Brooks. I used to do a lot of Garth Brooks, Keith Urban's country, this, that, Michael Jackson. <laughs> you are such right? a name dropper. It doesn't matter. You're so showbiz, man. <laughs> totally. Paul McCartney, whatever. And, and they'd be like, man, they would donate. They'd like, hey, you know, we're your outlets. We power the tour. That's going to pay off later. To put a pin in that mentally. Yeah, so real. So that's what made the logo, right? That's why you see the battery tour logo. And that's where I got this concept and idea that, oh my God, you're right. Like everyone, everyone in this room, you're an outlet. He's an outlet. You know, Coco's an outlet. Everyone's an outlet for change and plugged into each other, like on the local level on the community level, right, we can power change. And music is this universal language to bring us all together, to break down all these, these, these silos and build bridges. You know what I'm saying? So, I like this them. phrase that we have on the slide here. It's an initiative of the Battery Tour Foundation that harnesses the transformative power of music, arts, and culture to advance the 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, not known for being sexy. Or cool. <laughs> or cool. Or even known. Or even known. <laughs> they're more known than they were when we started, but they're not known as being super creative. How does Project 17 bring them alive? Yeah, totally. I mean, it's like, so you guys saw the video with the Secretary General, like, tell me what to do. 
<laughs> right? That's good. It's all good. Okay. And I was just looking at the goals. So I didn't even know what the goals were two years ago, guys. Be super honest. So when I was talking to him, I was like, bro, more people know, like, Johnny Depp's relationship. <laughs> or like when Kim Kardashian be posting, you know, my dudes be texting me about her post. Yeah, anyway. So more people know that, you know what I'm saying? And so I was just like, okay, well, I can fix this. So in like 30 seconds, I came up with the idea, but really I've been doing music for impact my whole life, right? So one song for each of the goals, you know, team up with a major artist that cares about one of those topics, right? Got to get a brand or a corporate uh, corporation involved so I can own the music, right? I don't know if you guys know about the music business, but sometimes you don't really own your own product, right? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so the corporation plugged into a goal enables us to make the song, secure the artist, take it to market, right? And, th and then the idea is having these 17 or more implementation partners, like these organizations that do the work, that get people the food and the water. And you're going to hear from one of them, the UN today, the Joint SDGs Fund. Uh, so 100% so of the profits can go to powering the action. So what you did in a way was identify that there's a problem. Although you're a music artist, you approach this like an entrepreneur and you identified with the UN, this is your problem. Despite the critical importance of the SDGs for the well-being of our planet and its people, they lack the funding and the global awareness to ensure their achievement. That is exactly what the Secretary General heard when I talked about Johnny Depp, people knowing him more than... <laughs> That's the appropriate corporate way. So Project uh. 17 is a creative response to that very functional and big sounding problem. How are we tackling it? The solution on this slide comes in three parts, my friend. Hmm. Uh, I'll read them out. You comment, Project 17 uses the universal language of music, and I would add the universal language of bickering about music, and which is the best, because that's half the fun. Uh, and the reach of social media, entertainment, and culture in order to connect every facet of humanity towards the achievement of the SDGs. We, we, wow. we need every sector working together to power change, right? And so it, it's beautiful when, uh, whether it's uh, you listen to a Paul McCartney or you like a Peter Gabriel, or you're into a pop artist, or whatever, how music can just kind of connect you. Yeah. Totally. Second one is to achieve the SDGs. We need everyone on board. It's not a light statement from youth, governments, NGOs, corporations, influencers, academia, artists, and more. Everyone, man. Everyone's an outlet for change. There's a hashtag in front of it. You can see it. And Project 17 is a turnkey solution that is dedicated to raising the funds and the global awareness necessary to advance the outputs of the SDGs. Plugged in. <laughs> Plugged in. Uh, now... You are, essentially, it's an album of music. Now, it's actually many albums of music, expression in different ways, but there's a core LP, a creative experience, a collection of songs, 17, one for each goal. You're getting some big artists involved, and you're, getting some, you're wanting to plug partners into each of those songs and each of those topics, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. This, this breaks down a little bit more about what we're doing because, guys, it's not just an album with artists, like, right? Like, we're plugging in influencers or change makers, one per goal or more, right? Because, you know, I was using a reference of like the, the world, like, tennis champion might not rap with Jay Z, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and like uh, like Sarisha's here from BNP, she may not sing with Billie Eilish, so you know, don't worry if you don't. But she plays a role, right? Like all of these CSOs, CEOs of these major corporations, NGOs, we all are humans, and we can use the framework of the goals to plug you in, right? So lining up change makers, obviously musicians, obviously the the corporations are here to really help us uh, get this music secure, the artists take it to market. Uh, 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 operate uh, the program and, and then of course the implementation part is that's what's essential right is the action like the actual impact like people getting food water etc more than just energy which I've been doing my whole life which you have been doing your it's whole not. life <laughs> you have but there's that whole list there of the, the different people it takes to try and think all at once about those different topics and the songs highlight that and they do what they make an emotional connection to the issue right and before he switches the slide, I think what I, I know we joke a lot, but uh, and I think we can have fun with this. It doesn't have to be doom and gloom, guys. Like, we can save the planet. Yeah. <laughs> but I think, yo, yeah, yo, I think what's really dope about Part 17 and why this, this day means so much to me is because it's 
already happening, right? So when you look at the slide, you see Sylvia Earle, who's like an icon. If you don't know who she is, just Google or whatever, the Voice of the Ocean. She's already confirmed and has sent her like 40 second public service announcement. It's like really cute. She's like, hi, I'm Sylvia Earle, I'm an outlet. I'm plugging the Gulf 14. It was really cool. But she's already confirmed, right? Uh, and, and we already have like a band like The Head and the Heart. We already have some of these incredible uh, corporate partners already, right? NGOs, etc. So we'll keep moving because uh, we're going to get to something really, really special. Keep that in mind. Shout it out. Uh, <laughs> Oh, speaking to the mic, but I was trying to go with that. Oh, shoot. Did y'all not hear me? <laughs> I was basically saying that, like, Project 17 is happening and y'all kind of plugging in. You know what I'm saying? Late, you know, but okay, that's it. Cool. Right you're on you're, time. You're, young, you've only done a thousand shows. <laughs> I'll never forget that. I'm, I'm, we're about to skip the slide, guys, but I'll never forget. It was like, it was like eight months ago and someone was pitching me to, like, some big music business guy. I'm not going to tell you his name. And I remember uh, we told him, you know, AY powered over 900 concerts. And the guy was like, he powered concerts with renewable energy? That's not possible. And then the guy was like arguing with him, saying, no, 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 you don't understand. He's done over like 900. <laughs> and the guy was like, huh, yeah, <laughs> renewable energy concerts. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's a random moment of just like, hey, guys, we're, but, we're, but that we're doing this. <laughs> any of us who've been on the front line trying to make change, that's... A very normal reaction to get out of the blue. Uh, here are some of the... So, so what are these uh, topics, man? These are some of the outputs that come from it. You, you are doing the music and the storytelling. ESG impact, uh, SDG awareness obviously comes out talking in formats like this. Thought leadership, clean music, global collaborative, youth empowerment. There's a list of things each there to unpack. There's quite a bit. How do you feel about the outputs that are coming out of this initially artistic instinct in you? Look at that. How does that make you feel looking at what you're doing? You know, guys, when I look at this, I see radical collaboration. And that's what it takes. Uh, youth empowerment, obviously being one of the 17 young leaders and having uh, so many of the world's youth leaders. I actually just flew here from Utah, random place, with some of the, the biggest youth leaders in the world. And we were all working on this project. Uh, and we're, we're blessed to be youth-led, youth-driven, but also w operating with radical collaboration to bring the world together. Radical collaboration, that is a big part of what it will take. Interesting you're demonstrating it. You can find a lot of this information, we'll share it with you at the end. You can digest it later on as we whip through it here. Uh, we've got these four kind of outputs from the Battery Tour. First one is the global partnership. The second one is sustainable tour and album itself. The third one is thought leadership. There's a project taking shape there. And there's a docuseries happening as well. I mean, guys, storytelling is key, whether it's Gen Z, Millennials, Gen Alpha. You know, I was just talking to someone over here about storytelling. You know, so I think for us with this project, it's essential to have this docu-series to tell the story of the brands, to tell the story of the artist. You know, I ask people all the time, I'll be like, bro, what does Cardi B care about? You know what I'm saying? Like, what is your favorite artist? Or Like, think about it. Who you follow on Twitter, right? Who you follow on Instagram, et cetera, so forth. What do they care about? What do they care about? A lot of us don't even know, you know? So I think that the, the, to be able to tell the story uh, uh, is huge, uh, and so yeah. Yeah, we, there's a timeline that you're working out, just to give you an idea of the, this whole project that's taking shape. From uh, Times Square Renewable Energy Concert, just drop that in there with <laughs> casual show, because <laughs> oh yeah, it's the Times Square show. <laughs> Man. Uh, COP28, you're going to be at that. There's a big project taking shape for that, isn't there? Davos, World Economic Forum, you were there. This year, you're going back. Sustainable Music Working Group launch. Then there's the docu-series and Sustainable Concert. There's a lot happening here, man. This is a lot. Yeah, I mean, I think it goes back to just saying, like, guys, this is already happening. Can everyone say, plug in? Plug in. Oh, say, outlet? outlet? Say, plugged in? Plug in. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so like that's the thing about, oh, you guys rock, that was really good. <laughs> they did just go straight with it. I thought they'd be quite cool I'm not supposed lot, to but perform. No. But guys, th this is happening, right? And I'm, I'm blessed to, uh, you know, this is like my first kind of pre-launch here in London. Yeah. yeah. And, right? And then I'm going to fly to New York and we're going to do the first ever renewable energy power concert in the history of Times Square. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. 
And we uh, we got this guy named Ringo, Ringo Starr is gonna like introduce me, he's really cool. So uh, yeah, and so as you see it's happening, we're gonna go to Cobb, we're gonna launch Project 17, we're gonna go to Davos, we're gonna do that well, with a lot, and we're bringing our partners along the way, every step of the way. No, we do not have 17 corporates on board today, but we do have General Motors. You will hear from BNP Paribas, you will hear from Samsung, right? Uh, and we will bring these along, and as they plug in, as more artists plug in, as more uh, uh, of every facet of humanity plugs in, we'll be taking them along this journey to launching Project 17 and save the planet! And save the planet. Sh I think we should have a conversation and invite our guests should on. Should we have a conversation? <laughs> like the GG show is Similar. It's and been a while since we did the, the GG show. It has but been. But this is live. It's not like recorded. We can't fake stuff, can't <laughs> switch my outfits. <laughs> Stuff. No, we can't Stuff. introduce the characters at this point. Things. That's another, that's a whole other thing. Mm. But you used to say this brilliant word, and I've quoted it everywhere. When you don't know where to start, there's only one place to start. You plug in your passion. Start there with what you're passionate about. And every week on the show, we have people doing that. And putting them together is what we do. Shall we welcome our guests onto the stage? Uh, would you please give a huge welcome to our range of guests? I will read out the names as you do. Please welcome our guests tonight. Nathaniel Matthew, who is the CEO of Global Resilience Hub. Yes, clap, just do it. Come on up, guys. Sophia Passetti, the Come CEO on, of Coco Nathaniel. Foundation. Sarah Shaman from world. Sustainable Finance Comms at BNP Parabas. So and beautiful. Andrew Teverson, CEO of the Stage Bus. <laughs> so Come and find a seat, hello. guys. Whichever Wait, seat you, you want. In the middle, seat. I think, somewhere. You be so the surprise, seat. brother. Oh, he's going to... He, we're keeping him as a special I don't surprise. know who that guy is. Sorry. Security. <laughs> uh, we don't know who he is as of right now. Uh, so, momentarily. AY used to just spring guests on me when I was uh, in Bournemouth kind of running one thing. He, he texts me. Oh, yeah, there's someone else joining right now. We'll just, we'll just get him in. I learned to go with Timo, this Timo, there's no one else joining right now. Oh, it's a surprise. I don't know what you're talking about. These are our main guests. Because okay? That's why there's this many chairs. Because... This one's for my phone. <laughs> Sheesh. You, uh, storytelling, Okay, continue right? with the show. <laughs> <laughs> Nate, I'd like to start with you. Uh, I, well, I still want to do that. No, I was going to do a reference for a British TV show that's very old, and I won't because it's a waste of everyone's time. We can cut this out of the live stream, right? Live streamers. Nate, I'm going to start with you because in a way you represent the, the cutting edge of the problem. Where are you from? You're CEO of a big NGO. Yeah, so we're, I'm CEO of the Global Resilience Partnership. We're, we're, we're big, but we're not too big. So I, and I think that's important as well. But we're a small staff spread across 14 countries, and we work on resilience. And we've been working on resilience for 10 years, so long before it was cool. Long before it is resilience cool? And that's what I wanted to start by asking you. Resilience is a big, broad word. It can mean different things in different contexts. Why is that your leading word as an entire organization? What, is it, what does resilience mean to you? So we feel that resilience underpins all of the SDGs, which is why this is such a great partnership, and we're so happy to be the resilience partner with Project 17. But for us, it's, it's a couple of things. So we want people, when climate change is happening now, I think that's important, and we know where there's going to be some really big impacts that we're locked into. We want people and systems to persist in that, we don't want them to collapse. So we don't want like the Antarctic ice sheet to collapse, and we don't want people to collapse. We also want them to adapt, sort of take a step or take a left to the right of where they are. But then where I get really excited is about transformation. And that's a key part of resilience. So that's the new ways of doing things, the new ways. And that's where climate risks changes to climate opportunity. Oh, I like that. Climate risks is climate opportunity. I'm a huge believer in the word opportunity in this. It's fearsome. Transformation, there's a very interesting word in there against resilience. It suggests new ways of seeing and words that I could quickly use that are more artistic, creative, storytelling-y. Why have you got involved with a music artist and a creative like AY, who probably doesn't look like most people walking around your office? Seriously, why have you got involved? Like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> like, I want to know. <laughs> so... I'm a climate scientist, and I guarantee I could ruin most evenings in about two minutes with some pretty crappy climate science. And we know that, you know, you've all heard it before, and nobody wants to hear it again. And I think that, you know, we met AY at the COP, um, and we were doing the Resilience Hub at the COP and realized, you know, with other partners, and realized that the way to connect 
uh, around resilience and to connect with different audiences was through music and through arts. Mm. And so we engage a lot of that, and AY has been central to that. And, and a big part of resilience, so we look at it across things like diversity, redundancy, inclusivity and equity, uh, adaptive learning and connectivity. And that inclusivity and equity part is really central to music. Mm. It, it brings people together and it, it crosses boundaries. It does. Ay, do you know what? You, you're going to jump in. I was going to say. Do you know what he said to me? I won't no, say this in front me. of everybody. No, you say that, and then I'll he, say my next. I, thing. I wouldn't. I wouldn't give this away on camera to a live stream or to the audience. But Nate did say to me, "I've had a lot of meetings this week. This was the panel I was really looking forward to." <laughs> Which Let's gives go. something away, I think, into, not, not about your other work, but about the nature of storytelling and arts and getting involved with an experience, I would suggest. Yeah, and, and I was going to say, you know, this, this kind of like can, can bring me to Miss Wonder Woman, Sophia, make some noise. Actually, we got two Wonder Women on the panel. Um, but like, okay, because you're in the NGO space and, and, and this resilience is an interesting topic. Uh, and it, it would be interesting to hear too, like Sophia from you and the thought of like, okay, the collaboration between like NGOs and, and the music industry, you know, like how can that lead to a more sustainable future? And like, what what's the importance of that, uh, Sophia, Nate? Hi. <laughs> um, Ashley, first tell them who you are and what you do. Gosh, sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. I'm terrible at live speaking, so I apologize in advance. No, you're um, not. But I'm very passionate about this partnership, so that's why I... Tap said, into that. Said, what yeah. partnership? I have no idea who you are. <laughs> I'm just a random... Um, my name is Sophia. Um, I run a foundation called the Coco Foundation, which is part of... Coco, the music company. It's Coco, the club and the music foundation. Free tickets for everyone. You get a show. You... I don't know um, if we can actually legally no, do that. No, so, but sorry. I mean, I, I don't. I don't know if you guys have been to the Coco since it's been revamped. Um, but we've been open a year, and we've got 16 spaces. Um, we've had a thousand artists through the last year, um, with over 700,000 people of audience. So, and that that's just one quite small independent music venue in London. But I think I think what you're asking me is how can can music drive creating a more climate positive Yeah, and, the, and, and, the, and, the, and, it's, and it seems like Coco is doing it, right? This collaboration with an NGO in the music industry. Yeah, I think, I think music is extraordinarily powerful, as is sports, anything that can really connect with giant, giant audiences of such a, an array of different age ranges and backgrounds and whatever it may be. Um, so if the music industry lead by example and create positive messaging around such a giant issue as the climate, people will engage and, and the shift of consciousness, I think, can happen, which is already happening right now. And you, and you see music companies all over the world really trying to drive this. But I think it's just about, you know, our whole thing for, for Coco and what we're doing at the foundation. And I'll tell you a little bit about the foundation. but. We're about small steps and just trying to be as authentic and real as possible mm -hmm. and creating tangible, um, just, just real results. Um, and huge, huge, huge supporters of grassroots uh, and community and new music. And the, the foundation focuses on, I'm sorry, I'm skipping because I'm, but it, our You're foundation. Doing great. I was <laughs> just about to say, like, okay. Tell me more about what your foundation is doing. Um, <laughs> I um, So the foundation focuses on two pillars. One is the environment, and one is basically giving opportunity to disadvantaged young people. And we have a key focus of 14 to 25, um, but we're actually working with a lot of primary schools as well. So we're, we're going all the way down to age four, and it's quite amazing how formative all those different age ranges really are. Um, we have quite, we're a registered charity. We actually don't launch publicly until September, um, but we've done, we're, we're doing some really good stuff from building forests on council estates, um, and we're teaching and training the kids on the council estates, and this is in partnership with Camden Council, and we've done eight so far, um, to learn about the environment, and we've got tree experts and climate experts, and they're there, and they're teaching them about the impact of trees and, and carbon and, and all those things that... You're not learning at school, or it's not at the forefront of education yet. So, 
And then we're paying them for two years to look after the trees mm. and buying them all the equipment to do so. So we've created this little community of under 18 year olds. And you know now we've got two of them interning at the council and they want to be in the climate space. And it's just very special. And it's, again, very impactful. How do you, just to cut in, how do you integrate that sort of sense of doing those? It sounds like a lot of work, a lot of investment, leadership training in a way. How do you integrate that with the experience of the music, the clubbing, the, the creative community? How do those messages, how do those experiences fold over for Coco? I think it's a, a circular economy because it, it ties into everything else we're doing, which is supporting young people and giving young people opportunities. We're working with over 25 schools and we're launching quite a few music focused um programs with these schools do you get them like making music practicing djing doing creative hands-on yeah so so the venue itself what they did so there's a at the bottom of the venue there's a public space called cafe coco and what they're doing there is just i, I think remarkable and when we're in this post-pandemic age where all so many music venues are being shut and so yeah. you talk about how is music sustainable this, this is how you create sustainable music, wow, it's a sustainable that's... culture, um, and creating a grassroots pipeline and giving these new artists a stage to perform and to further their careers and learn. And I think we're breaking three or four new artists every week in this cafe, completely unknown wow. artists, and we're creating a community and giving them a stage to do that. Oh, mate, can we give a round of applause yeah. for that, please? <laughs> yes. That's a, that is a great headline. I want to find out these artists. I want to jump, thank you, I want yeah, to jump yeah. to Sarah So you are coming from a sector that's not known for being uh, progressive or creative, <laughs> but your role really is. Where are you from? You're from a big organisation. Yeah, um, so I run our sustainable finance communication at BOP Paribas, um, which is Europe's largest bank. And I think the... One second, can you guys make some noise for her? She's so... Yeah. She's... I just want to make sure. Okay, this, this is a special human, all right? Oh my Tiny gosh. bank. <laughs> okay, sorry, you can go again. She does, no, she's amazing. I think, um, so in terms of why the bank would get involved, I think it's kind of an interesting discussion around, <clears throat> sorry, purpose as well. And I think that's where we really align a lot with AY because I think if we look at what we're trying to do as an institution, essentially if you're the largest bank in Europe, you have a responsibility to help shift and drive capital towards the new sustainable economy. And, you know, just from the kind of top line, like, that's a commitment that is something that we have really followed through in terms of walking the talk. So the numbers speak for themselves, but I want to talk beyond the numbers. So numbers-wise, you know, we've committed $350 billion towards sustainable bonds and loans. $350 billion. billion. by 2025 in terms of social and environmental capital um, across bonds and loans. We've really done a big pivot of the bank's whole strategy towards clean energy, and that involves saying no to new financing of oil and gas projects, which yes, is really Yes, let's important. applaud that, because, um, <laughs> sorry to break in, but I say applaud not just, yeah, that's great, right on. I, I mean applaud so that your brain makes a note that that's, that's a thing to take note of. It's a pivotal thing to divest from those behaviours, and you're saying... BNP Paraba is doing that. Yeah, I think there's a huge shift to 80% of our energy production financing will be in low carbon within the next few years. And I think that is the, the central point to say, right, you have the commitments. But then it's the follow through to how you connect those commitments to companies that you bank, to investors that you bank. And I think that's where the work with AY is really interesting. So it started because my boss was actually on a panel um, at COP with um, the head of the UN Joint SDG Fund. And the bank's been really engaged on the SDGs for many years. I've got some colleagues here that are working on it in the UK in terms of community engagement and employee purpose and raising that awareness piece to say, look, there's this rainbow of colours that can help save the world. And we need to understand how we can drive that with some of the largest companies, our own employees. We have 190,000 employees globally as a bank. And so wow. there's a huge potential to create change within the system of the organization that you're in. But beyond that, there's also this domino effect of change. And I think that's where the work with the UN Joint SDG Fund and AY is really interesting because there's this concept of basically catalytic capital. So how do you create an impact from de-risking 
driving investment towards places and people that need it most? And then how do you use the skills of your organization and use the storytelling potential of working with AY to generate way more engagement on the SDGs than we had before? So slight anecdotal example, we did an ESG forum um, a couple of weeks ago with AY in Paris. At the French Open. At the French Open. Um, and then what was really interesting is in that room, you had you know 400 leaders that are experts on sustainability from a range of sectors, some mm -hmm. of the biggest energy companies, some of the biggest car companies and the biggest investors kind of this whole spectrum of who is the global economy and I think AY connecting with them is really powerful because it humanizes the conversation on what purpose you can drive and I love what you said about being an outlet for change because I think that connects so much with many of the people that we speak to every single day like you know we've been doing an exercise this week for the next phase of our project with AY where we're mapping the SDGs and looking at how we're trying to drive finance and drive solutions critically it's not just finance it's actually the solutions but the, and, yeah actually the solutions just to break in I was going to say that um, he's one guy, one person walking into a room full of what I would call academics, people who have the facts and have the system at their fingertips, and just one person going in there full of theatre and story and narrative tips over all the potpourri and refreshes it, right? Dude, I've got to ask you, did you see yourself having meetings with global banks when you went out on the street of KC to do your thing? How do you no. cope with that, though? How it's did you cope with it? It's crazy, right? Or, like, I was, I was uh, Tom. There's Tom. Make some noise for Tom from Deloitte one time. You hey, know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think it was, it was me, uh, me, you, Sophia, right? But this was through Nate. Nate, because Nate connected me to Tom. Me and Sophia went to Tom and talked about Product 17 and, and whether or not Deloitte comes on or not. It, it was, you know, sometimes I sit back and I'm like, oh, my God. I don't know how long Coco's been around, but I don't think you guys have ever met Deloitte. Yeah. And I don't think you guys have ever worked together to like make an impact. And what I think is so dope, because like, even during that like, conversation, I was texting Brian Marquise. And then if, you, if you Google who Brian is, that's Billy Eilish's tour manager. So I'm like, bro, this is happening. You know, cause it, but I, I think what, like, uh, to answer your question, you know, like, it's just kind of dope to be like, oh, my God, like, this is actually really bringing the world together. And it's music. Because, like, whether it was, was it the Michelin dude, all those different companies. It was all these companies, guys. I don't know. You guys know them. Uh, there's a bunch of them. But uh, what I, there's that common thread, too, of, like, when I would show them the goals, if they didn't already know what they were, most of them knew, that there was something that they were passionate about. Or they come to me and like, yo, man, like, I think I was talking about Ringo Starr a few times. And a lot of people know Ringo Starr. They know the Beatles. Like, that's what plugs them in. And I've always thought that if you could get, if you could get everyone to, to, to like, like, just a little step, you know what I'm saying? Like a little change, everyone in their own way, individually, at your homes, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, locally, whatever, that's how you change the world, you know? And I think that's what's happening. But I'm, by plugging it into the big, how it fits together, which is how the SDGs help. They help you plug your passion into a bigger picture and other issues, right, which we're often saying. Nate, I've got to ask you, I mean, have you, how has this working with AY and the Battery Tour changed the way you see, has it changed the way you tell stories, where you're at, the, the narrative you're getting behind? How has it informed you? Yeah, absolutely. It's changed massively how we approach, you know, what we do in terms of convenings, in terms of communication. And what I love as like a theme that comes out is, is sort of the ability of music and arts to unite and then that the entertainment industry is so much more than entertainment. It's, you know, what do you it's mean got, by that? It's got, you know, it's got this huge role of fostering youth. It connects and communicates across geographies, across generations, across hierarchies. Mm -hmm. it's, there's so much, you know, even it's a sense of responsibility there, I think, that it, and it's great to see organizations like Coco taking that opportunity up, taking that responsibility and taking it seriously, and then also organizations like BNP Paribas to yeah. actually with the private sector coming in strong. Mm, yeah. I, I was going to say, let's harp on that for like a second. I know we, we're going to keep rolling through the schedule. Uh, but, oh my gosh, like, uh, Sophia, Swisher, like, 
I would never think, first of all, a bank would be involved in music. Like, what the heck? Like, I'd be telling people sometimes, like, I'm the only artist with a bank. Like, Jay-Z doesn't have a bank, you know? <laughs> yeah, when you say have a bank, it's a, well, but I, anyway, I, I, we'll unpack it later. I think that it's the, the beauty in um, unique and diverse partnerships. And they're so, so, so effective. Mm. Um, and partnerships are just the best thing ever. I mean, we've got eight programs running in our, in our foundation, and... You talk about how do you find the time and how do you create? You go and find incredible partners who mm. are on the ground, who are the experts within their field, and you support them. And I think the the really special part about AY and Project 17, which is, I'm, I, I think, why we're all here now, is because it's so authentic. Mm. And because it's Good so word. authentic and it's so real, suddenly he's got the... It's just, you've got everyone's attention because we yeah. want to support that. That's mm. driven by authenticity. And when it's that authentic in a world where, not such an authentic world and a lot of noise and you've got two seconds to grab anyone's attention for anything, you get, I mean, I met AY in Davos, literally within 10 minutes, I was like, do you want to fly to London with me tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and he did. Yeah. And he came straight to Coco. Um, and we formed this amazing partnership together and we're so excited and you talk about, sorry to break in, but you yeah. talk about partnership. Yeah. Uh, you, but I was going to also bring to you a, an artistic issue here, that when we talk about storytelling, you guys with the facts can preach it straight. Here's the facts. Climate scientists banging their heads against the table. Here are the facts. Why don't they speak for themselves? AY sings very clearly about his values and his vision of the world. How do you find interacting with artists, they deal with the thorny issue of preaching or how to sing about the future when so many of us don't think there is a future being honest how do you see and maybe help artists tackle that creative conundrum about the actual storytelling of how we get through this and how we testify to the, the crisis i think there's a difference between organizations having a positive message and utilizing their ecosystem and platforms to spread and engage audiences and individuals to do their part, whether it's recycling or whether it's getting involved in yeah. planting trees or whatever it may be. And I think for the individual artist, it's really emotive. So mm. it's, it's personal to them, how they want to say their message to their audience and their fan base. Um, but what we can do as an organization and a leader in its own field is help steer that yeah. and support it. And again, I think that comes down to just being responsible as a music organization and being accountable and trying to take real action even if it's small to move forward That's so tough. you can do massive things like we're going to be carbon neutral and we're using the most sustainable materials and we're not using plastic cups and you know all these big things but i think at the same time what's really powerful and what actually creates change is supporting a new music culture, right? And supporting a new pipeline and giving a platform for unknown artists to perform and doing incredible programs in young disadvantaged schools with the talent and the ecosystem to change the young kids' consciousness and help them in a more climate positive way. Give them way. courage, give them courage yeah. to be and, climate and hope. positive. And, and, and there's no better messenger, sorry, I know you want to speak, no, but, but there is no better messenger to young people than artists that they love to listen to Fair. like that's how you that's how they're going to listen they're not listening to sorry the climate scientists <laughs> i get it i get to, it to, to the climate you know scientists, well, mate, but, you, know, <laughs> you, you have a rapper or whoever it may be go into a school and talk about how to be climate positive and how to do your part as a young kid you're really going to take that in and yeah. you're going to go home and say actually mum, i don't want to use that bottle actually mum, i'm i'm not going to do that it, it that's it's like really shifting it's shifting culture. Mm. And, and it's a change agent point as well. 100%. It, I, think it, <laughs> I think it's a change agent point as well. I think what's really interesting about AY's story and I think the whole way that you've brought this project together is that, to your point on accountability, yeah. you make everybody feel like they also have a part to play in a really positive yes. way. Yeah. I think so often this climate crisis can feel... I say climate, there's obviously much broader issues at play as well on the social side and other and the 17 SDGs. Um, but I think that on the, the climate piece particularly, there's a lot of hopelessness in the narrative. And I say this as someone that has been mm -hmm. to COP since COP21. And like, I've been right. working on sustainable finance now for close to 10 years. 
And I think what's really interesting when you see that journey is how actually having a discussion with someone that is giving people hope and making people think, mm. okay, what can you do? How can you plug into this? How can you act as a kind of facilitator of change is super powerful, whether it's with people that are young, people that are executives. Like, I have to give credit to you for being able to turn around a room that's full of people that are like corporate executives that have been there yeah. for a very long time yeah. versus also turning a room around from a group of children. I've seen you do that. And I think it's really powerful the way that music can connect the change agency that we all have, whether we are a seven-year-old, a 70-year-old, or anything in between, or higher or lower. Amen, the change maker seat. Dude, but, you know, I, I, Nay, I think you wanted to say something. I could tell. Uh, I, was, I was just going to say that it's it's the inspiration, right? So it's it's the connection with the youth, which and then when you see the youth fired up and ready to go, then that inspires us. You know, the people who've been into these, you know, ten or fifteen cops or whatever. It's that gives us hope and gives us in, inspiration, and it's that that keeps Agreed. us going. Yeah, it, it does. Them, and, and see that uh, the, what I keep seeing is the theme of youth led, youth driven which is huge. And, and I was going to talk a little bit about some of the community stuff even BMP is doing. That was going to bring me to my next part about the, you know, it's, it's not, you guys are not just doing the high level finance crazy stuff, but also like the community driven work that like you're doing, right? And, and I, I think this is a great intro to a guy I look at as a little bit of a Superman. Uh, he's a little bit cooler than me on how he builds things. Uh, but like the, like the community, like, can, you know, doing the you know, ground floor. That that's a that's a link. Yeah. Show Doing it. the work, ground floor, <laughs> and he's a comedian. And, and a I was gonna cool <laughs> video of like what is possible. I go. This is how our show works. He sends me text going, press the video, man. Hide, Let's hide, have an introduction to our mystery money. extra guest right now by uh, f discovering his work first. <laughs> I'm afraid you can't have the honour in the UK of any of the places in London doing the first so uh, like uh, in, in renewable powered like a performance because we've done most of the sites in London already over the last ten years. <laughs> tell, tell them more about. I mean, you know, it's funny. I was talking about the the big music guy that we will not name because that could get me in trouble. Uh, that was like, this is not possible, you know. And I'll never forget like having that conversation with. Uh, I had a conversation with a guy named Michael Rapino recently, and he he's the CEO of Live Nation and uh, as well as a Ticketmaster. And we we're talking about what's possible. Uh, uh, Lollapalooza, I can, like we could do these things. Like tell them. I mean, it's not just like an if almost it's like a matter of when i uh, probably how you feel right like yeah, tell yeah, them what yeah. you do a, a bit like nate said we've been doing it since before it was cool um like we we've been doing um solar powered mobile stages for over 10 years um we can do up to about as it stands we can do up to about um eight thousand people on a battery charge for eight hours um, all self-contained. And one of the other things with our stuff is it's not just about the solar-powered stages, it's about the whole integrated system. And actually, you saw the stage there, and I think it needs less transport, it needs less people, it needs... It's all the other parts of the system, because so often when people try to do 
um, green energy and things. Uh, they come at it from the viewpoint of how they normally do things and then just swap the power supply for a green supply instead. No, that's not the way to do it. It's not just about using efficient equipment. It's about using equipment efficiently and actually redesigning, thinking from the ground up how you can get the maximum bang from your buck. What makes our stuff green isn't it solar power, it's that it's incredibly efficient. We can play to that 8,000 people on a domestic 13 amp supply out of your house. That's that, that, and this is all technology that's been around for... We, we haven't designed anything particularly specific from scratch. Our stuff is... It's just making use of what's out there and understanding how things work. Yeah, you're delivering experiences. You're, you're, the, the, you're the creating the experience platform physically, literally, for artists to do their work and showing how it's done differently. But you too get uh, non-believers, don't you? Oh, yes, yes, we have plenty of those. It's quite good having been gone for going on for... Because we've been doing this for 10 years. It's less of a problem these days. Um, you, generally, you can say to people, no, really, we, we know what we're doing. Like, it, but you do occasionally... We had someone the other, uh, uh, the other last year who... Uh, who uh, we had the exact quote of... Um, back via uh, the client, um, that apparently their sound engineer said that um, it is not possible to play to 300 people on a solar-powered system. Physics says so. Uh, <laughs> direct quote, I'm told, from a uh, production manager, from a uh, reasonably well-known artist. Um, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> yeah, indeed. And I, 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 want to, I want to throw a couple of things out there, because what excites me, and what, what, guys, what, what I want everyone to know about the battery tour and what I'm trying to do is, is not just be an example, but, but teach the next generation and, 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 and get them plugged into the solutions that they can do across the board. You know, it's, uh, there's, there's, there are things that are not listed on our like programs, like uh, the, the industry guidebook, uh, different things that different sectors of humanity can do that we'll, we will be drawing out with our partners so other people can follow the lead of this like new thing. And uh, that's why the level of importance of what you do with Stagebox is, it is, is phenomenal. I, I, was, I was gonna say, so many people in the business, at least that I talk to, uh, they say, well, can this get big? I mean, what? How big? Do you, what, how big can this be? Again, it's one of the conversations. There's no I, way you can actually power a show with say it's, fifteen thousand people, it's right? It's one of these conversations I have regularly with people. Is that it's like fundamentally, it's just scale. There's no, there's no. We could do it twice the size. You just need twice the batteries. We could do it tomorrow. It's, it's, it's not complicated. It's and again, one of the other ones we've had is that we've been entirely self-financed. Like we've had no internal money from anywhere. I don't think anyone would have touched us to lend us money to do any of this. And we've we've also come at it from a. I think one of the other things that's often lost in the green lobby, certainly has been historically, is this thing of actually, and it's less true now, but actually historically people, they don't really care about being green. Um, they like to think they're being green. I did an event yesterday where they, were, they had a big solar array that didn't good. actually do anything just to make it look green. And kind of one of the things I say to people about our stage of things is that even if you don't care about it being green, even if you think global warming is nonsense and it's all irrelevant, our solution works better than the uh, than the diesel alternative. Our solution is silent. It's cl it, there's no fumes. There's no heat off it. There's no no no. Like you haven't got to cans of diesel to spill everywhere. Like there's the one of the other things I think that's often key to get the message out with things is that these solutions are better than what was being done with with um, fossil fuels in the past. Yeah even if you don't care about getting rid of fossil fuels. And what you've illustrated there is that this is one big narrative problem. It's a cultural thing that people aren't hearing a story of, that it's not just, oh, we've got to do better and clean it up. But this is an opportunity to improve the way we do everything, right? We must all feel that. Anyway, I'm wondering whether this is a good point before we conclude and get everybody's sort of final thoughts. We've got another special guest and I think I want to say like a couple of things. Uh, let's see. I want to say that this has always been and still is a grassroots movement, yeah. right? Some people will come up to me all the time. They actually ask me, what can I do? Uh, and I, I want to make it super simple. And I want to just say, plug in. You know, it's, 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 it's going to take the radical collaboration that you see on this stage it's going to take, at least for this project to launch, I'm gonna need 17 or more sponsors. I'll need 17 or more 
great implementation partners that will actually take 100% of these profits and do good with it, right? Like we're gonna need these things lined up. So I think you're one degree of separation from anyone. I want you guys to know that. Uh, two, I had a crazy vision of like, you know, like uh, it's fa we, we live in this interesting world of social media and, 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 and micro kind of uh, universes through Twitters and et cetera. It could, it's so crazy of like promote developing and deploying these methods through like working together. I just, uh, yeah. uh, I think the last thing, the third thing that I wanted to say, and I want to hear from each member on the panel is just simply what goal are you most plugged into <laughs> and why? Can you just, can we just, can I hear that? What goal are you most plugged to and why? You know, SDG, on the spot. 17. Um, Crap, we should play them in the back. But I don't know we <laughs> well, I guess, yeah, the partnerships one is really interesting because I think it's the one that shows the interconnectivity of everything. I think, again, yeah. like, when you look at those SDGs, you can't necessarily silo anything out. Like, when you help a smallholder farmer, you also empower them economically. So you're not only tackling SDG 14 on life on land, you're also looking at eight on economic well-being and looking at things to do with gender equality often, because many of those people are women as well. And so I think for us, this, this partnerships piece is really critical because I think it shows that you can actually create impact through working together, and that's much stronger than working alone. I like it, I like it. That's Nate, what's, what, what goal would you most plug into? So yeah, for us, it's, it's also partnerships because we're, you know, we're a partnership in itself uh, and we work with 70 partners to, to affect change. And I, I think, you know, to take a quote from a musician that I listened to a lot when I was young, showing my age a bit, you know, I think there's something in, you know, the need to just sort of stop, collaborate and listen. And, Good uh, reference. Good reference. <laughs> and I think, let's do that properly. <laughs> stop. <laughs> Collaborate and, and listen. listen. <laughs> and I think we, we do, and we need to stop you know, what we're doing. We need to take a bit of a breath, and we need to figure out where the pathway forward is. We need to collaborate, and that's the partnerships, and work together across sectors, across generations, and then we have to listen. Ooh. We also have to listen to each other. Otherwise, oh, we're not going to get anywhere. Amen, yeah. While the next one, either Sophia or, or Tev, my dude over here, answers, uh, for the audience, okay? You can hop on your phones. You can like tag the battery tour, tweet us, whatever, just battery tour. Tell me what goal you're most plugged into. Oh, yeah, why. do that. You know what I'm saying? And actually, I'll say this some people, like, honestly, like the youth, they just be taking photos of outlets because that's the logo and they send it to us. You can do that too, you know what I'm saying? Make this mug go viral. But anyway, uh, which one? Huh? Yeah. Sophia, maybe? I, I connect to quite a few personally, and I, this might be a bit boring for this panel, but I'm actually going to mirror these guys. Oh, 17? Yeah, just because it's, I think it, it ties this nicely together and I think it's the real reason we're all here is, is partnership. And I think yeah. together we're going to do a lot more impact than just focusing on one goal. And that goal allows to help all the other 16. Mm. So It represents the culture change a bit, in yeah. a way, or what's needed. And music is fun, and people listen, people go where the fun is. I think music you, should be fun. No, yes. but that, that's the beauty of it. And then you get to say the message in a different way and connect in a different way. Yeah, indeed. Andrew, I'm going to ask I'm you. I'm going to go with uh, infrastructure, with, uh, um, oh, God, I forgot what it said. Number nine, the... Uh, uh, um, Infrastructure and uh, and um, oh god, yes. Com completely blank. Yes, um, just the the actually how you turn most of the technologies. A lot of the technologies already exist, and actually the key thing is actually how you how you make these into workable solutions for people. Mm -hmm. And a bit like with us, with our stages, that kind of it's the whole thing of um, that that we package it in a way to mean that the end client doesn't have to think about how to be green. They just book us. And it yeah. works. Yeah. Um, and there's so, whereas there's been an awful lot of kind of like, kind of, you know, you know, oh, well, you need to do this and you need, you know, actually kind of, no, make, keep it simple. Make solutions that people can jump on board with and can actually hit the ground running with rather than needing to kind of try to work it all out for themselves. Yeah, I was in, that echoes a, a, a meeting I was in with a local authority recently. And it, what came out clearly was, wouldn't it be great if we didn't talk about sustainability but simply talked about our futures? And everything folds into that, what you're saying. Yeah, definitely. Mr. Young, you're, you're standing in this, you've sort of left early like the format of our show, but also you're in the wings there. Is it time to share our, our last it, guest? It is. By First of all, can we make some noise for these amazing people? Yay! Changing the world! Say, Outlet! 
Blackjack. Say plug D. Blackjack. <laughs> okay. Uh, I just want to say. It's just really interesting. The UN can be a little confusing, guys. I can just throw that out there. There's a lot of agencies. The UN can be confusing. <laughs> what could you mean? <laughs> I cannot believe they even picked me as a young leader. Like, this random guy with dreads uh, dances around in street corners. Um, used to. Don't do as many as I used to, though. But uh, this agency, uh, so the, I came in under the, the envoy office of Secretary General, right? You know, DSG, Secretary General. And, uh, the, but there's all these other agencies, right? There's like 200 and something UN agencies. I don't even know. I, I it's forget. a test to be able to answer what <laughs> they all knows? are. It's a lot. Uh, but, uh, but, the, but the Secretary General made this fun for the goals, because I think it probably he was like, at some point, we have to do this, right? So <laughs> he made a fun Probably. called the United Nations Joint Sustainable Development Goals Fund. And, and I met uh, Lisa Corbell, did I say that right? And, and, and Elizabeth at COP before I met this awesome person. And uh, they immediately hopped on board. And I, I, I know that they're going to announce at some point that I'm going to be the official SDG champion. Woo! 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 Does that mean you've got to get a tattoo of all 17 wedges? <laughs> I hate pain. I don't know about that, too. <laughs> uh, but th they're doing amazing stuff, and we're so blessed to have them as one of the 17 implementation partners. And, and I think that we all should take a moment. Uh, I heard that she did a, a special video. I haven't seen it. All right. Should Intro we see it? the fun. It's Lisa Kerbiel from Head of Secretariat at the United Nations JSDGF. That rolls off the tongue. And long story short, yeah, behind us. It's cool. It's kind of cool. Kind of a Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, colleague, friends, and especially all the young people in the audience. My name is Lisa Kerbiel. I'm head of the United Nations Joint SDG Fund, and I'm honored to virtually share the stage with all of you, but especially with that amazing SDG champion with you in the room there and my dear friend, A.Y. Young. As you all know, music for impact is a powerful tool, and it brings us together, it amplifies voices, and it influences positive social change. And undoubtedly, Addressing the world's greatest challenges from climate change to gender equality, it requires all of us, action from every single one of us. The creative industry, the music industry, has a pivotal role in inspiring action to achieve the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, and that's why we have champions like AY working side by side with the UN to help us advocate for success. AY has a gift, I'm sure many of you know, and he's using his gift to the world, music, and directing it towards positive change and positive awareness. And we're so thrilled that the Joint SDG Fund nominated AY as a champion, a champ for the SDGs because of his passion for social good and his ambition to be a change maker. AY's ability to stand on a grand stage and address an intergenerational audience on the impacts of climate change and partnerships shows a true devotion of his life's work to the global goals and 17 songs for the 17 SDGs using sustainable energy to power his concerts is an innovative idea that pop stars today had not even thought of, but AY did. Music is a universal language and it mobilizes positive movements and lyrics tell us the story and are powerful tools to build a bridge of compassion and to indirectly communicate the larger picture of our climate crisis. And I'm proud to say that so far, the Joint SDG Fund has reached over 188 million people, making lives better around the world through social services, different kinds of support, and by leveraging money through SDG and blue bonds. In fact, $2.3 billion already leveraged by the fund. And I just wanted to give a few quick examples um, uh, so that the, the panel can continue on to the other panelists. Um, one example of, from the government of Indonesia where the government is developing blue economy strategies to improve and manage their marine and coastal ecosystems. Obviously also looking at not only how to protect the planet and the coral reefs, but also how to bring economic opportunities to the communities that live there. And one of the groundbreaking um, issuances recently has been the sovereign blue bond that raised over $150 million and that goes directly into Indonesia's blue economy, which helps again, protect its world famous ecosystems and, and give people jobs to protect them. In, at the same time, the Joint SDG Fund has worked with the government of Indonesia to raise over 8 billion through the issuance of SDG aligned bonds and sukuks or Islamic finance bonds, which are compliant with Sharia law. And this ability for investing in impact oriented startups, focusing on high quality education and jobs, implementing biotech solutions for waste management, improving productivity for shrimp farmers, 
it's one person at a time, one SDG at a time, um, where we're trying to really make a difference. Let's go from Indonesia over to Fiji, uh, just a short trip um, where we, we support local fishermen. Um, so imagine Edwin, he's got a family of five. He fishes every day out on the Pacific, um, just off the island of Suva. Um, how can we, the UN, help promote um, multi-million dollar investments into the islands of Fiji to protect their coral reefs from Edwin, the very fisherman who goes out every morning to provide for his family. So we've invested and helped leverage $50 million to accelerate reef positive livelihoods so that Edwin can keep fishing, the tourists can keep visiting and going scuba diving, but the reef will thrive and survive. And that includes everything from ecotourism and setting up sanitary landfills, all the different parts and, and pieces that can really help not only improve food security and income for fishermen like Edwin and their families, but also protect the billion dollar tourism revenue of visitors to, to the islands of Fiji every year. So imagine protecting coastal eco ecosystems help us save the planet, but at the same time, we're helping re build resilient economies for people like Edwin and his family. Friends, colleagues, young people, we're at the halfway point to 2030. Some of you may imagine seven years being a long time, but seven years is very, very rapid for us to try to gain some of the losses that we've suffered due to the COVID-19 pandemic and of course the war in Ukraine. And that means we need world leaders, we need the private sector, public sector, everyday people like you and me to really make that positive change. Um, and we're trying to be very innovative um, and, and really help governments like Uruguay who want to turn all of their buses electric. They want to put their entire transport system to be solar. And they need some infrastructure investments to do that. And then in Suriname, the government wants to support pineapple farmers to expand sustainable farming techniques that also protect the Amazon forest. Same thing in Gabon. How can we go into reforestation to of course move away from oil and gas? Progress like this, my friends, is music. It's music to the ears of those of us who love sustainability. And these are the stories that AY songs tell all of us. They're songs about our interconnectedness, about how industries can help citizens and vice versa, and how music can be a catalyst for change. So I am very inspired, and I hope you are too, to help us all work together towards these sustainable practices that we can mainstream through our music and our everyday lives for people and planet now and into the future. And thank you so much for listening, for sharing your time, and really look forward to meeting each of you in the future as a powerful force for change. And now I hand back to the panel and to my dear friend, AY. All the best. Thank you, Lisa, for taking time to share all that, some examples of what uh, the Joint SDG Fund actually delivers. Guys, a last thought from each of you uh, on storytelling. There's a whole conversation to be had now over dinner and elsewhere. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Sharisha. What's your sum up thought? I think we have to humanize the storytelling. I think Lisa just did that brilliantly at taking this huge issue of blue economy in Indonesia and saying, let's relate it back to this one fisherman and his family. And I think we can continue to do that. We have to humanize these issues. Even within finance, it feels like really big numbers and really big issues and really big companies and stakeholders, but ultimately, they're there to kind of create change through you, me, everybody. Yes. And so I think humanizing that is really critical. And I know that's something we're going to be doing with AY over the next few months and ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Humanizing, that's wonderful. Thank you, Sarisha. Andrew, your sum up thought. Um, I think that there are positive solutions. That like, um, you know, it's not, it, that there's a lot of doom and gloom out there, but actually there are things that we can do now and that have been around and are ready to go and actually helping people to understand understand that actually it's not going to be a uh, making changes isn't going to mean that their life is suddenly awful like it it, it it will make things better in reality yeah if we get to it soon enough collectively sophia what's your last thought um i i think that the most important thing for, for this is just small real authentic tangible steps and I think community is key and, and educating community is key whatever the means or platforms or tools whether it's streaming or TikTok or a program in a school I'll give you a very very quick example we, we our foundation we rewild a lot of primary schools 
So we've done 27 already. And I went to visit one recently, and I had these eight-year-old kids come up to me, and they're like, oh, are you the tree lady? And I was like... The tree lady, that's not... And I was like, yes, I'm the tree lady. And they just started telling me about how, how different their, their everyday school experience is now, having all these trees instead of mm. just concrete and looking at ongoing buses and traffic. Mm. Um, and then they go home, and, and that's, I just think that's what makes such a difference, because these young kids yeah. are now positive about the climate, and they're telling me that they're not going to use anything with palm oil. Interesting. So, Auth authenticity, yeah. changing the experience, humanising it, seeing that solutions are there already, seeing differently. Nate, what's your take home? It's hard to add because it's a fantastic list, but I, I would say hope is a big part of it and inspiration that I just get from AY, from the way you know you communicate out. And, and just, you know, we do a lot of work supporting youth in storytelling. We bring youth into the COP process to make sure that they're there to almost like audit who's up there speaking. Mm. And, and, you know, this just the, the power of arts and music just to, to really drive this and drive hope is, is what keeps me going. Yeah, you've summed that up beautifully. Would you please give a huge, warm welcome and a thank you to our guests, to Nate, Sophia, Sarisha, and Andrew. Please, guys, thank you. You may now take your seats amongst the hoi polloi. Thank you so much for joining us up front. Leave your mics on the chairs there. Uh, we, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, everyone. No, that's all right. Uh, we will continue the chat. We've got nearly to the end of our time up the front here as a presentation. We will be uh, continuing the chat for those of us who are in a dinner. It's upstairs on the roof. It's a great setting if you've not seen it before. If you remember, you know full well. That's probably partly why you remember. I want us to keep those conversations going. As uh, AY said, use the hashtag, follow AY on um, social media and the Battery Tour. Go to batterytour.com uh, and let us know your thoughts. There it is, Project 17. When I look at the UN's Global Goals logo, I've got this shtick, and AY knows it. The revelation to me as a music artist, coming to this actually through music, a project of my own, that made me look at the world differently. When I then started to interrogate this, that wheel, I understood what struck me as an outsider, as a, not somebody who speaks as though they work in the UN. Like AY, I'm uh, from a very different background to AY, but at the same time, I'm an artist. We clicked across miles and cultures, age. We understood the language of narrative, of storytelling. We were like two bros straight away and know how to speak to each other on stage because of that innate language of storytelling. But I understood what struck me as an artist looking at the SDGs wheel was that there's a, a goal missing. And in my opinion, it is the goal that will activate all the others. When you saw the lovely uh, uh, th the version that we had up on screen there that looks more like a teardrop, teardrops or an explosion version rather than the wedges, what does that explosion imply? A thing in the middle, catalyzing the explosion. And it's the missing goal. And it's art. Because art is the business and practice of creating new ways of seeing. And there is simply nothing, and I mean nothing, we need more right now than new ways of seeing. New stories of us. And you have to get out and write them. Sit down and write a narrative about the future you want. Write the song about how you really feel about now. Show up and testify. Artists can help you do that. AY's job is to be a lantern in the middle because he is such a gifted showman. And so he is prepared like a job to take all the hard work, the slog of being a trooper, my brother, and stand in the middle of bank meetings and, and getting on planes to go and plead places because he has to be there to show up and show a different way. And everywhere you go, you transform rooms as a top-level global artist should. It's AY Young. Bro, bring it in. You guys make some more noise for Timo. Like, you guys are going to make me cry. You gave oh, me a soapbox, brother. 
Guys, this has been a lot. You are, go you are going to try and... What, what's your summing up thought from this? And then you're going to share something. I, guys, I'm, I'm just, like, really thankful. Like, it's, it's been a lot, man. I... I I, I would do these like these eight to ten hour shows like every day, like Monday through Saturday, sometimes take the Sunday off, sleep in the car, go to the next city. It would be year after freaking year for years and years. I actually started in 2012. <laughs> so I'm getting older, obviously. <laughs> yeah, you've got a while. From my perspective, you've got a way to go. Man. But you've also... It's, it, what's, the, what's that line? It's not the time. It's not the age. It's the miles. Yeah, yeah. You've done a lot of miles. I'm just, I'm so blessed. Man, can we make some noise for him, the panelists? Kirsten, over here, my team, Carrie, uh, Rosie from The Conduit. All these people. Sonia's here. Natalie. I mean, amazing people. <clears throat> Guys, uh, it's going to take all of us to come together. Uh, yeah, I'm like having an emotional moment. Have it, because I will say, well, you don't get it together. You can, you're, this is a place where you can let it out, because you have a right to be a little bit tired. It's a hard work job, always bringing the positivity, which is your tone of voice, and I don't see you run down ever. Hmm. And I've seen you in private, and I've worked with you on stage, and you are somebody who digs deep and brings it every time. But you are just one guy using your calling with a decision. So you're allowed to be just occasionally, a bit publicly weary. Yeah, right. That's why you guys are going to help me. Like, because they, I really do feel like I should, I, I will, I will, let's, let's see. You're going to try it. The anthem for goal 17, Go right? On. Why not? Um, you guys will help me. It's really easy. You just say, we can change the world. Uh, trying to get uh, Paul McCartney on here by the end of the year, that's the aspiration. Uh, maybe uh, secure Peter Gabriel since he, he just hopped on. Since he... Just going to jump in. Happens. I was in a cab with him in January. His phone went off. Peter Gabriel came up on the screen. Uh, Peter Gabriel bumdailed AY. He doesn't know how to work his phone now. And, right, and I saw him come up and I heard his voice over the phone. And uh, that's the kind of showbiz life you're leading. Guys, you, you were in the car when he called. I was in the cab and it I'm just I'm like, happened. Peter, why are you calling me, bro? We just met. Uh, this is We Can Change the World. Let's try it out. For you guys. You guys can all stand too if you want. This has like been an epic day. Just loosen up, feel the love. Let the energy out, yes. Oh yeah, he's gonna roll it. It's gonna sound interesting. This is not a performance venue, but it's amazing.